Alright, what's up y'all? It's Wooly here. So I'm gonna touch on my electric killer loadout. Uh, somebody did ask me to cover it. Now with that, there's not really much to kind of go over. Um, electric killer is pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna clarify a couple of things really. So all you really need to heal a raid are these three right here. Your priority your group hill and then your big group hill and uh, galvanize kind of keep that on reserve right you don't want to be popping that off all the time there's not really a need for it uh, you're mainly going to cycle between these two and you can always clip right um, and that's how I usually heal is I heal mainly with these two and galvanize is kind of like your safeguard when the group starts to fall in health so like when everybody is starting to drop health at once uh, that's when you want to pop galvanize it really shines when you know there are seven teammates that are like half health uh, that's when it's going to give you the biggest um, heals back right um, so be mindful when you do use galvanize otherwise you can pretty much carry a whole raid with just these two and occasionally pop this so unless you're just trying to fill your supercharge really quick then you can spam all three of these um, static push the supercharge generator is what I'm using uh, because I am using the black atom ally right and here I am using electrogenesis I know a lot of people who do run 10k like to run Tesla ball for that extra supercharge um, generation because Tesla ball does generate supercharge every time it ticks but in this case uh, we're just going to be running Electrogenesis. Uh, so we're going closer to a full heal. Uh, the only difference is we are going to be running Static Push here, right? So we get all the good heals, and then we still get extra supercharge generation. So if you want to switch this out to Tesla Ball, that's entirely up to you. Uh, personally, I just like to keep it as Electrogenesis. I don't think anybody's going to complain either way. Um, you get healed, and you get supercharged pretty quick. And this is why I run dual wield and I just flurry shot I just feel like it's so much quicker right so you can really pop off a lot of shots with it as compared to like brawling or rifle or something like that so I usually just roll flurry shot full time I'm not there to do damage I'm just there to hit something and heal something right um, and then of course we are going to be running group transducer because we are going to be running 10k so I'll show you the allies first what I'm using I'm just running static for the polarized PI um, as my attack and then I'm going to be using Shazam um, for the weapon attacks that grant stacks of 1% restoration up to a maximum of 20 stacks since I am using flurry shot that does kind of come in handy a little bit you could opt for Batman who laughs here as well um, and just do his luck of the draw we got him down here but my stat I mean my Shazam is higher so I just run with Shazam right uh, my um, second support I could not think of the word okay uh, Black Adam we're going to be running uh, his power of Atten for the supercharge generator and abilities generate 30% more supercharge. So pretty nice. It, it, it is pretty nice. There's a not pretty nice buff to it. So you do get your 10k um, pretty quickly with it. You don't necessarily need Tesla ball. Uh, it's entirely up to you. Like I said, I like to have a little bit of a buffer there, right? Um, artifacts. Right now we have Page of Destiny. We do have Purple Healing Ray. I know mine are kind of low. Uh, I used to have them at 200, but if you know me, uh, you know I've been pretty notorious for scrapping artifacts in the past, but I've kind of chilled out on that a little bit. Um, I don't scrap my main art, and I am a DPS main, so support role always comes second. Um, so Page of Destiny. So how page of destiny really works I'm not gonna read out the whole description basically it, it places a bunch of stacks on somebody right so if you've ever seen anybody um, who has just been like smacked by the 
boss or an ad and they're just getting shredded and their health shoots all the way down to like 1% or 10% and then immediately shoots back up, that's your page of destiny um, going into effect and saving them. That's how it works to kind of simplify it. Okay, so as long as you're healing, um, you're adding stacks onto them and you can potentially save them from a one shot or just getting ate up a lot of the time. So very, very useful. Artifact, very standard for healer. That's what you need. Purple Healing Array is the other one. Um, bread and butter for healer. This is when you see that purple white circling underneath somebody. Um, that's Purple Healing Array. Um, pretty much, like I said, I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can you know, read it for yourself. But it does increase the amount of people you can heal with your priority and your group heal. Um, and it does reset the uh, priority and group heal. So if I cast my group heal and then I pop my priority, um, there's a strong chance, depending on what level it is, it's going to immediately cool down the group heal. So you can pop it, and then bam, it's ready to go again in case you need it. And sometimes you do need it um, in those harder instances, right? So it basically cools everything down a little bit quicker between priority and um, your group pill. And then I'm running transformation card, of course. Now, here's where it gets a little bit interesting. So we're going to give you a little bit of sauce on this one. The artifacts aren't really high that I'm swapping with, <clears throat> but it is what I'm swapping with as a healer. So transformation card is here, right? And then what I like to do is I like to swap it with orb to get a quick priority. And then we get our specter. And he just does his thing. So at minimum, you get six seconds where he's just casting a priority heal. Um, as it moves up, it does go up and how long he's out so you can see here that he can linger for six seconds nine seconds nine seconds 12 seconds at maximum so 12 seconds pretty significant at 200 uh, although it does cost a lot of power to cast him you can see there it took a good chunk like a quarter of my power bar but uh, it's not something that you need to swap in every time that you're going to pop priority but it is something that you can swap in from time to time to keep him running. Okay, so it's just it's just again a nice little buffer to have. Transformation card isn't necessary to have on as a healer. It's mainly page and purple healing ray. Um, so swapping with orb is just a nice little bonus. Why wouldn't you want to get it? Uh, 120 is a really good spot to have it, of course, but the higher the better, always, you know, of course I'll tell you 200s, but uh, 120 is a really good place to have it, that's where you really start to feel something from it. Uh, the other one is going to be the Star Heart Fragment, um, so if I pop it on and I use my group hill, uh, we basically give them a little bit of extra health. Uh, so using a group hill grants you and up to 7 group members health equal to a percentage of your restoration. Um, so I currently have hundred and seventy four thousand restoration because um, I don't have all my elite healing gear I've switched roles and power so many times this episode and I'm still wearing some DPS jewelry basically just the neck and the ring um, so I don't have the full restoration but still why is this useful? Does it really matter so much in Elite or Plus? Probably not a whole lot, but you know, every little bit helps. But what I like to use it for is buffing the troll with extra health if they are buff trolling, right? And I mean, of course, it's nice to just bam, pop it on, add a little more health. So if somebody's running Amulet or something like that, that can come in handy. Um, even though I think most people have just entirely switched to Ebon. But if the troll is buff trolling and they're spec in health, you 
then it comes in handy. So that's just a little bit of sauce. And then, of course, we are going to be running the 10K EOG. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, um, your augments will be all green for restoration. Uh, attack mods, there's not really much to say about them. It's always going to be max damage in the hand because there's absolutely nothing else for healer. Uh, regenerative shielding is not really that good. Um, tumbling master in the feet, there's never anything useful to put into the legs. Uh, if you're focused mostly on healer, you can change this out to something else like the... Um, superpowers cost 5% less to cast or the uh, larger power pool, but I think I would probably opt for the percentage of superpowers tech mod um, back and put whatever you want there that's going to benefit you in healer roll. I'm, like I said, a DPS main, so I just don't switch these out. Uh, neck, I still have my DPS neck on, so it wouldn't be precision here. It would actually be uh, the restoration mod, and then of course. Um, I haven't bothered to get my healer weapon. Um, it's not really necessary, to be honest. But if you get it, of course you want to get the replenishing adapter. Uh, or whatever the one is for um, restoration, restorative. I think replenishing might be power. It's been a while. But you know what I mean, right? Um, and that's it. It's, it's a pretty pretty decent build um, I feel like it kind of covers a lot of different areas it's leaning towards pure heal because um, I do like to kind of play it a little bit safer uh, just in case but it also has the benefit of generating supercharge and really catering to uh, the DPS's in the raid and then catering to the troll when we buff their health a little bit, right? So these two are really good. I don't say I don't think I would necessarily keep either of them on. I would keep transformation card there, but these are good to have as swaps. And then I still like to go into my OMAC as healer, right? If I'm healer or troll, I always go into my OMAC. And that's it. Other than that, um, I do all my normal swaps, but uh, if you don't have those, you really just want to focus on the healing ones. Um, the only other support one I would really focus on getting would be your Philosopher's Stone. Get that power free casting and a slight buff to yourself. Right? Um, and then Eye of Gemini, of course. Now, if you're not running Eye of Gemini, you're not 10k swapping. Um, you can put whatever you want here. You can put a shield or something else. There's not really anything else as far as healer that's going to be incredibly useful to you. Um, and then you can opt for keeping the group transducer or you can go for you know something else. But uh, group transducer is pretty much what you'd want to go here um, unless you're going to be running Heart of Isis or something you know for Word of Power and in that case uh, what I would do if you weren't going to be uh, buffing Supercharge like that and you don't have Black Adam then you know just put Batman who laughs here or something there's not really a whole lot of allies as far as healing goes um, but this is specifically what I'm running. I'm not telling you it's the best. This is just what I'm running. And I'm only talking about this is because somebody asked me to just touch on what I'm running specifically um, from one of the videos that I put out uh, not too long ago, I think, where the tank died. Um, Might have been God of Monsters. I don't know. Anyways, that's what I got for you today, guys. It's pretty straightforward loadout. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to drop them in the comments below. Make sure you join to the Discord, my personal Discord. I'll try to attach a link to it. Other than that, I will catch you next time. We'll be out. Thank you for tuning in. Stay frosty.